Hi, I'm Joshua Farnsworth and welcome to the Wood and Shop Traditional Woodworking School here in Earliesville, Virginia. In this upcoming video, uh, my friend Elia Bizzari, a well-known Windsor chair maker, will show a really important lesson on how to read the anatomy of a log so that you can split your log into high quality lumber. Before we split our log, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the anatomy of a log. So, of course, here we have the, the bark, and then the sapwood is inside the bark. Some trees have a fairly narrow band of sapwood like this here, or some wood might have a whole log be sapwood. Um, the sapwood is the only living part of the tree. Um, here we have the heartwood, um, which is more or less dead. Um, it serves to store water for the, the, the future health of the tree. Um, the first year's growth of the tree is called the pith. It's missing on this particular section of log. Um, and then the number of, any number of years inside that is the juvenile wood. It could be 10, 15 years, depending on the tree. Um, the juvenile wood, like juvenile humans, is, is sort of useless. It's uh, gnarly and twisted and, you know, just a problem. So, uh, it's not used for chair making. You get rid of it and use the wood outside of it. So the larger the log, the higher the proportion of usable uh, wood in it. Um, so hardwoods are, are classified into three broad classifications. There's diffuse porous, which has pores that are scattered randomly throughout the, the log. There is semi-diffuse porous, where they sort of fall into bands of early wood, which is very, comes on in the spring and is fairly porous, and then that gradually transitions into late wood, which is much more dense. Um, and then there's a ring porous, which is what this is. This is a red oak log. Um, and ring porous has very distinct early wood layers, which are fairly porous. You can see one um, right here. Um, and then late wood layers which are much more dense and structural for our purposes and probably the tree's purposes too, I'd imagine. Um, and there's a very distinct transition between the early wood and the late wood. So, this, so for the backs of, uh, of the chair, the spindles and the bent back, um, what the, the woods that tend to work best are ring porous hardwoods. Um, You'll notice that this one that I'm pointing at right now is a fairly wide growth ring, um, late wood layer, but that some of these late wood layers up here are fairly narrow. Um, and so the, the faster the tree grows, the, wa the wider the late wood layers are. But you'll notice that the, all the um, early wood layers are more or less the same width. So that means that the faster the tree grows, the faster the ring porous hardwood tree grows, the stronger the wood is. So for chair making, I prefer um, fast grown trees. Um, the other thing I want to tell you about is the um, rays. Uh, so they, they are these silvery bands that run from the bark to the pith. Um, the vast majority of the pores or the, the fibers in the tree run up and down the tree from the butt of the tree to the, the very top. But uh, these rays run horizontally in the tree as it's growing. Uh, they run from the bark down to the pith. Um, and so like layers in plywoods, they constrict the wood movement in that plane. So wood moves, well, ring porous hardwoods move roughly half as much in the ray plane as they do in the tangential plane. Um, so that's why our turnings will go oval in that, in that plane. Um, they'll, be, they'll be thicker in the, in, the tangential, in the ray plane than they are in the tangential plane. Um, they also form planes of weakness. So 
when if you look here there's a split forming um, and that split is following that ray plane so when we split the log our, our cracks are going to want to follow that ray plane. It's going to be easier to start a crack in that plane. Um, and um, the other thing is that when you're shaving, um, it's easier to shave in that ray plane than it is in the tangential plane. One more thing to talk about the log is that the sapwood is on, on all species is not rot resistant. So no sapwood is rot resistant, but heartwood can be. So when the sapwood transitions um, to heartwood, it gets these things called extractives, which give the heartwood its color, in this case this pinkish reddish red oak color. Um, and it all those extractives also give any rot resistance that, that the tree may have. So cedar is known for being rot resistant, but uh, no cedar sapwood is rot resistant, it's just the heartwood that is. Um, so that's also true with, with the oaks. Um, the oak heart, heartwood is fairly rot resistant, but the sapwood is not at all. Um, so sometimes I'll be using uh, a log that's been sitting around for a month or two and I'll be able to use the heartwood, but not be able to use the, the sapwood at all. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking, come take a class at our school in Earliesville, Virginia. You can also visit our website at woodandshop.com where you'll find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours, and our very popular tool buying guides. And make sure you subscribe to our free newsletter to get our latest articles and videos. Enjoy!